newest book, Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude, uh, feels really different than your first two books. Hmm. Um, one of the investments that um, the first two books, I mean, among other investments, uh, was exploring violence and masculinity. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that has, it is present, still present in the Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude, but it feels like it's very much in the background. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you arrive at these poems, or what work were, did you do to to leave that um, theme behind? Um, yeah, I think you're right that that it's definitely not as as present in the in the work, maybe, but the but it's still present. Like you think of the the long poem Spoon, um, or some of the other poems where there's a kind of specific investment in maybe those very precise questions. Um, but, you know, really the thing is that the poem, the poems feel like they've become way more sort of, um, you know, simply like I've been, I've been gardening a lot and working on orchards and working with people in community um, in a place um, that is, um, has, I think it's sort of allowed me to sort of think um, differently to sort of like realize I have these other concerns or something. So like um, while those things are still always sort of present in my work and, and, and in different kind of work too, um, I feel like I have this, <clears throat> frankly, by being in the garden, I feel like I've had this sort of opportunity to meditate on a, in a different way on these little things that are more outside of myself, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe being in community. Um, in this different way, you know, working on projects like an orchard together have given me a different kind of space to to think about other things in addition to those I things. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the process. If you were kind of taking a notebook with you into the garden, mm. if you reflect later in a more meditative space mm -hmm. or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I was ever really taking a notebook into the garden with me. Um, yeah, I don't think so. I think what I was doing, just like I did like the day before I got here, I was walking around the garden and just sort of being totally captivated by the things that were happening in the garden. So like, mm -hmm. I have these Nanking cherry bushes and the, it's just a bush cherry and it's, they make a tart cherry and they, they're beautiful and they get about eight feet tall and big like that, eight feet wide or something. And the, the cherries are beautiful, these little things, but the leaves, the leaves, um, the blooms start to emerge and they're like right now, like they're back at my house right now, they're doing that. And they're, they're this kind of color that's just, you know, at this time of year, it's like this sort of incredibly radiant pink, like just peeking out, you mm -hmm. know, just starting to come out. And you can see it. I have like four of these bushes in the yard and one's kind of in the back, far in the backyard and one's kind of up close. And at this time of year, it's just like that is to me like so... It's in there. It's so in there. So the garden is always doing that to me. So I'm always sort of walking around and like getting lost. So I think I'm actually just going to look at the peach tree, but then I'm like, uh, I'm stuck, you know, in this great way. So, yeah, so in terms of process, I don't think I'm like writing things down. And I often will think, ah, this year I'm going to study the, you know, I'm going to sketch the way that the service berry buds emerge and I'm going to do all the stages and, da -da -da -da, and I'm going to do it with the peaches and, da -da. and I never do that, you know, and <laughs> maybe I will one day, you know, I love the idea of it, but I, I just look at them, you know, and then I think about them and write about them and um, all that. What do you think being in the garden can teach you or teach one? Yeah. Um, so uh, a bunch. Let's see, I'm going to mosey through it, though. Okay. <clears throat> so one is um, attention. You can, if you want, like study these things that are endlessly fascinating, like to me anyway. Um, there's, never, there's never really like a... I mean, the winter gets quiet, but still there are all these like bones in the garden. The, but the, there's endless opportunity for looking very closely at things that are always changing. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is that there's like all this sort of sensory stuff going on. So 
so in addition to that looking stuff, there's like all of the, <laughs> all of these fragrances, right? It's like you're smelling all these things all the time, you know. Tastes, gardens make taste. You know, things feel like stuff. So blah blah blah. I'm just realizing like they're like totally sensory, like full. You know, gardens are. Um, but there's this other thing too, which is like um, there's a way of being in a garden. It seems to me, maybe it's me. I don't know if it's a garden as much, but that it's potentially slows down time. When I'm in a garden, time slows down for me. Um, so it becomes this kind of lyric space, you know. Mm -hmm. And in that lyric space, like, I'll notice, you know, whereas if I'm in a kind of regular space, productive, going through my life, and I'd be going through the garden, getting stuff done, um, I'd go by, you know, say that cherry bush, and I would notice it's blooming and blah, blah, blah. Um, and neat, and maybe I'd like prune a couple things to get it out of the path and then go on to the other thing. But there's something about a garden that to me makes me not do that. And it makes me want to smell the cherries a little bit and want to look at the flowers a little bit and notice like a bee and then like do it again and smell it again and then notice that there's not just one bee but there are like 80 pollinators in this big old thing mm -hmm. that I would not have noticed otherwise had I not like got into this other space. Um, and that's a thing that a garden has done for me, you know, and there's more. So <laughs> there's like, there's this other thing which I think is incredibly useful and um, which is that everything that happens, it's always turning into this other thing. So you're witnessing mm -hmm. this, you're always witnessing processes. So the idea of compost or whatever, it's, it's this really beautiful thing that you get to watch how a thing dies to emerge into something else, you know, how it dies back and then it emerges as this beautiful thing. Um, and how things turn and feed beneath the soil, you know, that most of the work, you know, like really good gardeners, really good farmers, they talk about like they're, they're soil farmers, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're growing soil. And that there's all this magic happening beneath the ground and so you see this beautiful plant but it's down there the other thing is that and this is <laughs> I could go on and on um, you know there's like pruning and stuff mm. that has to happen like tending the garden which is um, something about being able to make a thing I mean that's like, it's kind of a metaphor for revision you yes. know making yes. a thing be what it is um, most is but there's this other thing and I don't know how it fits into being a po po writing poems um, but it does fit into sort of, for me, being okay, is that watching cycles, things die, and makes me feel more okay. Yeah. Well, you said, you talked about pruning as a metaphor for revision, but I felt like we were talking, you were talking about poetry this entire time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um.